Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal and Expedition Portal, and I am near San Antonio with the new TRD Pro. Now this truck is made in Texas, and it's a significant change over the previous edition. In fact, this is an all new truck. So it has a 3.5 liter turbocharged V6. This particular model, the TRD Pro behind me is also their iForce, which is a hybrid model that makes 430 horsepower and 585 plus foot pounds of torque. So impressive numbers, plenty of power for this application. And we're going through the off-road trail right now and we'll start reporting on the individual components that we were testing, the effectiveness of this truck off-road and on-road as well. Stay tuned. So I'm on the off-road course here with the Tundra and very easy to drive off-road as a big vehicle. Uh, it's gonna give a lot of driver confidence. And the reasons for that is the suspension tuning is quite good, especially for lower speed events like what we're experiencing on this course. So it allows for a lot of wheel travel, which isolates the driver from most of the impacts as well. You can also see the advantage of the larger diameter tires. And we also had a rock crawling climbing event, which the vehicle had no trouble with. Um, but if you just let the vehicle perform as it should by putting it in a low range and selecting a locking differential, uh, the vehicle is, is quite impressive for that kind of scenario. And overall, again, easy to drive. The uh, steering is a little light for my taste but uh, braking modulation is good. Throttle modulation is a little low on effectiveness. So we're seeing uh, on tip in a little bit too much throttle response. So it's difficult to modulate off-road. If you use left foot braking, that gets a little bit better, but uh, you get a sense for how the vehicle's performing. All right, so let's talk real quick about road performance. I just did about a 45 minute loop. They sent us off on our own, which is always good because then I can make a lot of notes along the way. So handling at the limits, very good overall, an improvement over the previous Tundra. And I think even a little bit better than many of the other half ton trucks on the market. And I believe that is because of that five link rear suspension. So it's a lot more sure footed, a lot more direct. Um, the, the steering weighting actually is adjustable because it's an electronic rack. So it's a heavier weighted steering than you would have like, for example, in four wheel drive low range, which I find to be an advantage. So on center feel is very good. Uh, the steering is very direct. Uh, when you start to get towards the limits of traction, it feels fairly neutral. Uh, but once the vehicle starts to even step out a little bit, understeer or oversteer, uh, the vehicle stability control is still very aggressive from Toyota. They've never had a very elegant vehicle stability control algorithm in my mind. So it's definitely favored way more towards the safe side of things. But fortunately in a Toyota, you can do a single press of the VSC off button, which actually only turns off traction control. But if you do a long hold, you get VSC turned off. Now it doesn't come off completely, but it allows the vehicle to handle much more neutrally. Um, it allows for a lot more driver input and more spirited driving, which is what you want to have in a vehicle that you're enjoying on a road trip. All right, so let's talk TRD Pro and front recovery points. As you can see, there are no front recovery points on this vehicle. There's not even an access plate, which we'd normally see on this lower part uh, to screw in a recovery point. Uh, there are manufacturers that make gross vehicle weight rated screw in recovery points um, that is not available on the Tundra. So if you do need to do a recovery, you've got to connect it with a J hook off of a transit cluster to the second cross member. So you would need to actually come just after that front skid plate and you can see where the lower control arm attaches there. There's an opening in that cross member. That's where you would slide in a transit cluster with a J hook, which would give you the maximum triangulation. It also gives you gross vehicle weight rated structure that you could use for a recovery. Now on the TRD, models or the other models of this truck, it's a lot easier to get a J-hook access point. On the Tundra TRD Pro, it's very difficult. There's only one spot that you can use. So now why did they do that? 
There are some arrow requirements that they have mentioned, but I think the one that is the most salient reason why they haven't done it is because of the potential for pedestrian impact. All right, so we are looking at the rear suspension of the TRD Pro. Now this is an important consideration. We've got to talk about this because the new model has actually a little bit less articulation than the outgoing TRD. And that is because it is moved to a five link rear suspension and it's limited primarily by shock packaging. So if we look into the rear wheel well here, we can see that the shock can only be so long in this position. And we're actually topped out on the length of the shock. So this rear suspension has a lot more to give. On the Land Cruiser, the shock packaging is different. They're inboard more, so they can actually put on a much longer shock and get additional articulation out of it. So with the shocks being outboard, it does improve ride and handling. It improves higher speed stability, towing stability. So that's the reason why they did it. But because of that packaging, they can only fit so long of a shock. So for those that are looking at the aftermarket changes that you may wanna do with the Tundra TRD Pro, it would be to find a way to fit a longer shock to get the maximum amount of extension travel out of this rear end. All right, so this is a simple thing, but it's something that makes a big difference off-road. So as a driver, you wanna be able to have some distinguishing feature on the hood that gives you an indication for the position of the tire. So that may be the inside of the tread or the outside of the tread or even the tread face. This vehicle has this style line here that drops off fairly steadily. So there's not a way to pick up a position of the tire. So you can see where the tire is positioned here and there's no distinguishing style line that allows you to align the tire with an obstacle without getting out. So that's just a simple design note that when you look at a four wheel drive, it's the reason why G-Wagons and Jeeps and Land Cruisers, older Land Cruisers, they all had a very unique style line that allow you to align the driver to the tire, to the obstacle. Okay, I am in the TRD Pro and I'm on the off-road course. My first chance to drive this model. I've been able to drive almost all of the models, including the crew cab, six and a half foot bed through the course, and all of the TRD models perform very well. But this is the TRD Pro. What makes it unique is that it has about an inch and a half lift in the front. It uses a different Falcon tire, a more of an all-terrain, um, and Falcon tires always perform very well on the rocks because of the softer durometer. They have a better adhesion property than most all-terrains. And then it's got an aluminum front skid plate, and this is the shorter wheelbase unit. So I'm actually cruising along in crawl control, literally a version of trail cruise control. So it makes it very easy to drive while I'm recording a video here. But what's interesting about this particular truck is it solves a lot of our concerns about the previous model, which is uh, it didn't have quite low enough of low range of overall crawl ratio. It also did not have crawl control. It did not have a rear locking differential. And those are all really important attributes for a vehicle that we want with maximum capability. And the bottom line is a full-size truck needs to be capable. Um, it, if you're gonna have a big vehicle in the back country, it needs to have a lot of re reserve capacity. So reserve payload, reserve towing capacity, but also reserve capability. So that way you can get a big vehicle through technical terrain and that's what they've done with this new Tundra. So big improvements also in effectiveness of crawl control, a lot smoother. You can see that the vehicle's not doing that lurching that the previous edition of the crawl control did. Um, and then the brake track control is also extremely effective. So I just climbed the hardest obstacle on the trail, no locking differential, just put it into rock mode and did left foot braking and brake traction control kept wheel spin to almost negligible. So in big improvements overall, uh, very effective on the trail for a full-size truck.